64,242 raw meat, 55,172 molten glass, 257 hours. Completing every single challenge that Port Phasmatis has to offer. Welcome back to Canafist. Can you say, welcome back to Canafist, Junk? Eighty cooking and eighty seven crafting. These grinds have taken twice as long to complete as everything else that we've done on this account so far put together. So if you are ever going to hit like and subscribe on any of my videos, please make it this one where I've spent over ten days out of the last twenty seven days playing this game. Thank you. Now, you might remember this clip from the previous video where I went over all the pros and cons of the various routes that I could take whilst doing crafting on this account in Port Phasmatis. However, it may seem that I was dropped on my head a few too many times as a child because none of these turned out to be the best route. And as about 400,000 of you in the comments pointed out, you can just sell the glass products back to the charter ship because it acts as a general store. I didn't know this and am a certified moron for not doing so. Okay, so as we're recording this, it's been about 45 minutes since I uploaded the last, well, episode three, which has just gone out. We've got a long, long way to go on the crafting, but as you can see, we've done 17.9% already and I've been doing this new method now for about 10 or 15 minutes and yeah I am brain dead as it turns out because you can just sell the unpowered orbs back to the shop and still turn a profit so this is the new method that we're doing which is selling the orbs back to the shop buying whatever's left uh, grabbing the 10 that are in the next world and going straight back to the furnace. No need to faff around at the bank or at the general store selling and banking and blah, blah, blah. Uh, I mean, that must have been painful for you guys to watch me do like a six minute explanation of why I was doing what I was doing just for it all to be categorically incorrect. So <laughs> here we are now. We're nearly at 70. Um, and we found a far better way to do it, which has increased our XP per hour quite a lot. And here is level 70, the first major milestone in the account. We could create an amulet of power with that level if we had access to any of the things that we need to do it. But uh, yeah, there we are. Level 72, which is the level that we need for the skills and necklace, I believe. Yep. Uh, yeah, really rattling through the levels. As, as, I mean, I imagine this whole video is just going to be me getting cooking and crafting levels uh, where each one feels like five seconds for you and several, several hours for me. Level 74, crafting Dragonstone bracelets. I wish I had a combat bracelet because it would be the best thing I would be able to wield by a long way. So, I'm not entirely sure if I've put these clips vertical or horizontal, but I'm playing them vertically. And my friend just reminded me of the hop method that you can do with two clients to make hopping noticeably easier. So what we're gonna do here is show you guys how that works. So, try and hop like that, and then this client is gonna log in rather than this one, and we are instantly into the next one as opposed to having to have any wait time. How nice was that? And then the other client goes to that. That has actually tried to hop to the next world, though. So when I try and log back in on this one, again, we're not going to get spat back out into the same world we just left. So the shop is going to be full. So we'll do this again. Uh, it's such a nice way to do hop methods because you don't have that annoying kind of frozen load screen for like five, six seconds between world hops. Um, so this is quite a nice way to do it because it actually makes it fun to do the world hopping which is actually really tedious we've got you know many many hours of crafting left 86 hours by that measure 
Um, but if I can master this hopping method, we're saving probably about four seconds per run, which adds up to about 40 seconds per hour. So it is a long time over the whole over the whole grind and it does take a while this grind so let's go again hit trade click login on the other account sell sell buy buy and hop and then this account should log in job done and away we go look at that and then this will be full oh it's a thing of beauty that is <laughs> and then we're ready to go again easy easy oh this is so nice this actually makes this fun here we go big level coming in just now Level 75 crafting slayer rings, which I guess technically I can get the gems, but I'm never going to have 300 <laughs> slayer points to unlock that. So that will be totally useless to me. Whoops, I'm not crafting. Um, but yeah, 30.5% of the way to level 87. So we're kind of getting through it now. 75 crafting, still 73 cooking. I'm probably going to do all that over one one long weekend when I'm on holiday. So that'll probably stay 73 for a while and we're probably going to be focusing on the crafting. But yeah, level 75 from just Port Phasmatis. That 87 seems quite far away, but this is a good grind because eventually I'm going to need it. So uh, this is just going to come up sooner or later in some form. There's going to be some stupid crafting grind and realistically 40 odd KXP per hour for no money isn't too bad. Okay, we've got a really big level about to come in. This is massive. I'm hoping... Yes, there we go. Level 80 crafting, which means we're now halfway to 87. Dragonstone amulets unlocked, so we can make a, glor make a glory at some point if we find one. But yeah, crazy. Crazy, that. We, uh, I really wasn't sure if I'd have this grind in me, but we're doing pretty well. Um, what I am going to do is grab grab the, uh, the crafting supplies that I have left over in the bank um, from when I was training the skill wrong, um, which is, one second, which is, let's see how many we've got. 2,200 unpowered orbs. Not bad at all. <laughs> Look at our meat stacks. Oh my god. Um, so with that level, that means with level 73 cooking and 80 crafting, we are officially halfway on both of these grinds. So with the faster XP methods that I have nowadays, we are officially into way past halfway, really, because I can get XP faster now because I know better methods and I've got like higher level training methods so there is 55k and we're gonna spend some of that on some meat because i'm about to go on holiday for four days um and going on holiday for four days means that i'm gonna be doing some really afk activities like in the evenings and stuff just before bed so what i want to be doing is cooking meat so i'm hoping that a couple cooking levels are going to go past for the next time you see me cooking, basically. Um, so if I can get to 75 over the next four days, I'll be relatively happy with that. Um, but yeah, we're really sort of on the final stretch now. We've just got a lot of skilling to go. Imagine for a moment, if you will, that you are me, Frey, self massagist in the uh, Canifis region, and you get a notification on your phone which links to this comment on your most recent video which uh, essentially says raw bear meat and raw beef are able to be one ticked just like crumb ones. And I click on the video link, somewhat skeptical. Surely this isn't true. I've never heard of this before. But Black Delta is absolutely correct. And this is what we see when we click on the YouTube link. As you can see, very clearly one ticking beef. So uh, I thought I'd give this a go because it might be able to speed up my XP quite a bit. Okay, so it is time to see if this absolute crack works. So we grab the bear meat. Let's run over here. I think run energy is probably going to be a problem for me, but we shall see. I then will pick meat and then... We go something like this. 
Why is that not working? Oh, it is. <gasps> That's outrageous. Right, what I need is to put this as... Uh, I need to go to this fella and put it in resizable so that I've got that there like that and then I just minimize that fella and then we should be good to go I don't know oh my god the XP per hour on that is going to be outrageous oh my goodness <laughs> right let's do let's do a bit of time with this and see what XP per hour we can get Okay, so it works, but it sometimes just breaks for no reason. And it won't, like, start the sequence again. It's like, if you let it cook for two ticks, it, like, has to finish the cycle and won't let you get back to it. Um, so with the mistakes or glitches that are happening at the minute, I'm getting about 60k XP per hour, which isn't too bad. My run energy is going down too quickly, so I think probably what's best is to mix sort of, like, an AFK invent, See what I mean about that kind of just not starting, even though the click pan's the same. Um, so I think I'll basically just have to mix a one tick invent. See, well, like, why is that breaking like that? Like nothing about my click pan changes. Um, that's a really like light break as well. It can break way more than that. So I think probably the most efficient thing to do would be like to do an invent of this, and then do an invent of chickens. And then do an invent of this and then do an invent of chickens. And that'll probably keep my run energy up and increase the XP per hour like overall. Because um, obviously you can't one tick the the chickens, right? Um, see what I mean? Look, why is that doing that? And then it starts again. Um, so yeah, we'll uh, we'll persevere with this. I think I think it's quite an interesting little innovation. So thanks to the guy that brought it to my attention. Um, definitely makes the cooking grind a bit more interesting um, rather than just pure AFK sadness. I mean, at this XP per hour, we're talking 15 hours to get level 80, which wouldn't be too bad. We can't keep this up because the run energy is just consistently going down. But if we mix this in with our 30k XP per hour method of just the normal cooking, we're going to be sort of saving maybe five, six. Look at that. Like, why isn't that starting there? Like, um, we're going to be saving about five, six, seven hours overall, which isn't actually an, a, a bad little amount. Like, why does that happen? That's ridiculous. Um, it doesn't do that with Karamboin, so I wonder why it does it with the meat. Um, but yeah, there we go. That's the new method. Very cool. 77 cooking, 74.3% of the way to level 80 really rattling through it the one ticking has really sort of sped things up overall um but i'm still doing quite a lot of afk just because it's it's it, this is the least taxing thing that i have to do because there's no world hops and stuff so uh yeah just three more levels to go until 80 cooking level 81 crafting crazy how we're getting through it now well over halfway look at that 55.2 percent six levels to go on the crafting three on the cooking Oh, I can taste, I can taste the end of this chunk. So last night we got level 82 crafting whilst on mobile. So we did 320k XP yesterday, which is about the maximum that I could, I could ever do in a day, which is about the equivalent of eight hours, um, which may not sound like as much as you could possibly do in a day, but bear in mind I'm balancing that with a full-time job and looking after my kids so uh, yeah that's about the max that we can do in a day so if I can do another how many days would that be another four five days of absolute max efficiency I can get to 87 in five days but we've got a four day weekend coming up so I will not be doing uh, max efficiency um, I'll be I don't know I don't know if we're going on holiday again somewhere not not don't don't make that sound like i'm going to the maldives every weekend just like if we're going down the coast somewhere um 
but if we are then the gains will slow rapidly so from this point we're still well over a week away from the video now it may have only been a few day uh, a, a few seconds for you guys since the last clip uh, but it's been a few days for me and probably more than that probably more like four or five days but we are here now with and you shall see relatively soon the amount of uh grinding i've been doing the last few days we are now at level 85 crafting combine the accursed scepter interesting um but there we are 85 crafting just two levels to go we are let's have a look if i do a bit more crafting um 82 percent of the way to level 87 which is crazy only 700k xp to go which which still sounds like a lot it's kind of um just under 20 hours um but it feels so much closer being level 85 than it than like to think i started this grind at level one in this chunk and i've done level one to level 85 in the space of just over two weeks that's kind of crazy um but here we are we're edging ever closer as you can tell the method that i've um, been implementing for this has changed slightly i now i now get 13 every single invent even if it requires um hopping twice i think it's better overall xp and certainly easier in the oh uh, shout out to switch nice guy um yeah certainly easier um on mobile which is which is interesting because you can buy five at a time like really easily on mobile by just a left click the same as you would for buying the whole stock um which for reasons that i shan't get into because it won't be interesting to anyone ever makes it slightly easier doing the crafting on mobile than pc which is why the last few levels weren't recorded um but here we are 85 not long to go i can craft basically anything at level 84 i could craft a black dragon hide body um which is quite interesting because um over here in canafis there's a tannery so and there's a needle and thread i believe in in this shop so if i ever manage to get just regular like black dehyde which is dropped by like everything i mean i guess swear of black dragons it's quite far away i guess but i mean black dehyde is dropped by loads and loads and loads of stuff like uh, probably the theater of blood or whatever drops it um so if i can ever get black dehyde i can just craft a full set straight away which is kind of crazy um but yeah mad level 85 crafting onwards and upwards i'll go on then we'll get another crafting level level 86 just one to go ah here we go we are on to the final stretch now i'm hoping to get that knocked out in two days and then we'll be finishing off the cooking and any other little you know side goals that we've got in this chunk but otherwise we're doing very well so let's chance our arm here as we mix things up and do some cooking and see if we can want it cook whilst talking we're doing relatively well so far um i kind of mix up doing the beef and the rat meat so that i don't run out of run energy but here we are getting level 78 cooking very exciting two more levels on the cooking to go or one more level on the crafting ah oh, nearly done i love these uh you've been playing a while please consider taking a break messages that they send i will never ever consider taking a break this beef is not gonna cook itself i'm like fucking gordon ramsay in here you know cooking the fucking beef so here we are it is a big moment for the account so 80 cooking members can now cook sharks so let's get one of those cooked 210 xp and here is also 87 crafting oh that took 
so, so long, but we are done. 80 cooking, 87 crafting. We now only need a couple of tiny little goals until we can tick off. Well, not got the region locker on, so I won't be ticking off anything. Um, but let's let's put that on so we can have a look. Uh, if I just tick that, that should do it. There we go. So got all these chunks unlocked, and we'll be un and we'll be ticking off this one and rolling another. <sighs> this one minute clip took so long. <laughs> You, you don't understand like satisfaction of getting incredibly mid levels like 80 cooking until you've gone and cooked let's let's have a look shall we um let's have a look what what we've got from this um so in the bank we have well we've got like no money left is one was one of them so we've got what 6800 because i decided to buy a load of trout so i cooked a decent amount of trout because i feel like having some good food will be useful and we also have forty-eight thousand cooked meat and sixteen and a half thousand cooked chicken so we're good on low level food for a while um but yeah that we can add those to our impressive stacks of marks of grace and we've kind of done what, like good levels now, I guess, in three skills. Because that's kind of what Chunk Man is defined by, right? Is getting incredibly high levels in specific skills in weird ways at one at a time. And then once you've done that for all the skills and you've kind of unlocked 20... Well, I guess not 23 because you never really unlock Herb Law um, or Slayer normally. Um but once you've kind of got decent levels in like all the skills, then is when you can really start rolling chunks really quite quickly because you start, you know, if I ever unlock, I think I mentioned it before, but if I ever unlock something like Black Dragon Hide, I, I have the level already. So even where normally you go, oh, fuck, I've got to get 84 crafting. That's huge. You just roll it straight away. Um, so, yeah, this is, this is a good moment because we're never really going to have to do a major crafting or cooking grind again. Um because 87 crafting will cover pretty much everything. 80 cooking's a bit low and if we roll something like a manta ray or whatever, but that's very unlikely in of itself. So, yeah, here we are. 80 cooking without training any fishing. That is all from uh, Bob the Bob the whatever randoms. I've also decided to start lamping hunter because I feel like that will be more useful to me. We're actually relatively close to a bronze axe because the swamp crabs down here can drop it. So I'm not too worried about lamping woodcutting, especially now I've got the 80 cooking in Port Phasmatis. Because the main thing that doing the woodcutting would have been good for would have been chopping some logs to get a fire so that I could cook easier. But now we've got 80 cooking, I'm not too bothered about that. So we're lamping hunter now because... It would be nice to get some implings, to get some upgrades, you know, all that kind of thing. So, yeah, major goal completed. And now on to the next few small grinds before the chunk roll. Right, so here we are back at the Banshees. I don't think I've killed one of these on this account. Uh, they hopefully shouldn't be too bad because they're only 22 hit points. But I, oh, I've not got earmuffs on. Oh. <laughs> okay, let's go, uh, let's go get some earmuffs. Oh, no, I'm getting drained badly. Run, run away. Oh, it's going to take so long for my stats to rebuff. Because I don't have any restore potions or anything. Oh, no. That is an epic fail. Right, so we've recovered our stats. Let's grab a set of earmuffs, I believe it is, for Banshee. 200 coins. Put those on. And we're good to go. Okay, so Banshees have a magic-based attack, so I've got the best magic gear that I have. I think the main... So I've got, you know, plus six, which is uh, meh. But my main problem, I think, is I'm one magic. So I'm slightly worried these things are going to wreck me. I think they only hit twos, though. So if they do, hopefully the fact that I've got, you know, 47 hit points and a shitload of trout... Should hopefully mean that I can kill them relatively quickly without taking too much damage. But I think there's going to be a lot of trips to hit the 1 in 512 rate it is for the uh, Dark Mystic Gloves. But let's get started and see how we get on. Hopefully now with the earmuffs we shouldn't be getting drained. 
I mean, yeah, they're just gonna, yeah, they're just gonna hit two so much, aren't they? Oh, oh, this is gonna be so bleak. <laughs> this is gonna be so much worse than the crawling hands, and the rate is exactly the same on the item that we need. Um, but I guess we'll have some magic gloves at the end of this. Come on, one and done. No chance, but we did get the easy, easy task done that we need to get done here. Hopefully, less than five hundred and eleven to go. If we go over rate, that's gonna not be fun. <laughs> no fucking way. No fucking way. Five kills. Five kills. Look at that. Oh my god. Lol. <laughs> yes. Yes, the RNG has come round after the 612 for the crawling hand. That is unbelievable. Oh my god. Yes. That's so good. Are they, right, do they actually give us any good stats? They should do. They'll give us... Oh, I can't wear them. <laughs> oh, yeah, of course. Right, so now all we need to do is go and get us some mind runes. And the only place to get mind runes within our chunks is to get afflicted kills. And the afflicted are down in Morton. So let's go down there, uh, see what we can do with the stats that we've got. They're quite high level. I think they're 50 or 60 something. So we might struggle... Um, but I don't think they've got any weird mechanics like the werewolves or the vampires that's going to result in them healing or having mad defense. So I think worst case scenario, we might have to flinch them. Um, but yeah, and I think the rate is about a 1 in 64 for mind runes. And then from there, we've got the air runes in the bank and we shall be able to cast wind strike. And then we'll be moving on. Well, we won't be moving on because I've still got some steps in Ghosts Ahoy to do uh, because I didn't bother. And I probably should have done whilst I was in whilst I was in Port Phasmatis, but here we are. Uh, I can speak to Valerina at her home in Port Phasmatis, so I'll do that as well, but first we'll go and get the mind runes. Hello, darkness, my old friend. Okay, so we're here, and the afflicted are actually way lower combat than I thought they'd be, so this should actually be relatively much easier than I thought it was going to be. The lure shades are presumably aggressive which is going to cause me some ag but it looks like single combat so we should be okay sorry if you can hear stuff happening outside i'm not sure if this new mic will pick it up because it's really good or block it out because it's really good so we'll see um there's lots of diggers outside but looks like we can kill these afflicted relatively easily so the mind runes should be quite easy to get hopefully we can get them in uh you know four or five kills again that would be nice 55 strength while we're going for the mind runes. 55 combat as well. Very nice. Hopefully we'll get them soon. We're about 45 kills deep with no mind runes so far. Just hit 194 afflicted without getting any mind runes. So we're triple the rate that we need. Um, hopefully we get it soon. Oh, oh, right. There it is. Mind runes. 277 kills for a 1 in 64. That is nuts. That's over what? Oh, just under, just over four times dry. I mean, imagine if that had been for the Mystic Gloves, it'd have been over 2,000 Banshee. Um, but here we are, got the Mind Runes, and now we should be able to complete the chunk after we do the Ghosts Ahoy stuff. Right, so let's cast this wind strike and get over to Port Phasmatis. Why can't I? Oh, cause it's... <laughs> okay, there we go. Right, see you, werewolf. And we hit two, so we got max XP out of those runes. Right, let's head over to Port Phasmatis with one of our tasks done, and we should be rolling a chunk relatively soon. So there we are, We're, we've done step three of Ghosts Ahoy, we cannot get the nettle tea and therefore, well, or I think the bucket of milk, so we cannot continue with the Ghosts Ahoy quest, and that is, or oh, maybe it's not the last thing, let me just check the, uh, the like, uh, what they call achievement diary tasks, because there might be a couple of those, but I don't think so. Okay, so there was actually one more task that we needed to do in this area, which is to cook a thin snail on the range here. Let's check. Let's hope that I get 100% success right here. And there we go. Easy task done. And we are done with the chunk.
So this is where we're at at the moment. No current chunk tasks, having completed everything in Port Phasmatis. Don't really know what I want. I feel like the Barry's chunk could be fun. It's the only real sort of fun one on here, but I also worry that I wouldn't be able to complete it at all. I feel like it's probably quite a steep ask with the stats we've got at the moment. But uh, yeah, let's get to rolling and see what we can get. Lumberyard. That was a big... T okay. All right, all right, that's positively doable. It used to be a pretty huge task because it had a range um, and I'd have had to run meat from this bank to this range. <laughs> um, but now it's actually not too bad because there's because I have 80 cooking now. All we need to do is get some fairly low level stuff here. It's picking up a bronze bar. I'm guessing that's to do with the men in here. Um, one thieving pickpocket a man, couple probably pretty easy tasks make a normal plank that's just some gp and some logs chop down a dying dying tree in the lumber yard any axe can i do that i don't know if i can actually do that because surely that's just wood cutting and i can't use my steel axe because i only have uh level two wood cutting we'll see about that that might not be possible um and then yeah some other fairly low level stuff so that is where we're going to kick off in the next episode. So the next episode will be completing this chunk and probably, well, depending on what we roll, a few more. But with that chunk unlocked, we know what we're doing next. Let's uh, add the numbers onto the rest of uh, where we can go from here. So now we can do our first wilderness chunk uh, going south down into Varrock. And can we go this way? Yes, because we could go around the edge. And that one. And that is a death chunk, I believe, because that's an estate agent right there. Um, and the lumber yard is just there. So, in fact, no, it's not because we can't get to a house portal at all. But it would be a pretty scary thing to have unlocked because basically as soon as we get a construction method, we could go and uh, get 99 construction. So we're in a pretty hairy spot. But... I guess we're kind of breaking out of Mauritania at the moment, um, which is kind of a good thing. So this chunk kind of makes it so that there's quite a lot of areas we can go this side. So we're not just uh, we're not just a Mauritania locked account anymore. We now certifiably have a useful area to us outside of Mauritania. But yeah, that's a uh, pretty interesting set of chunks that we have at the moment. And uh, I'll get on with this this stuff here. Pretty easy stuff, and get to rolling more chunks in the next episode, but wow. Wow, that was a big chunk that we just completed. It feels weird. It feels weird going from having to get 87 crafting and 80 cooking to going to have to get 10 fletching. Um, so that's, oh, it's a nice change, actually. I'll probably be able to do all that today. How interesting. It's not going to take 27 days or something to complete a chunk this time. Um, but yeah, I'll, uh, I'll speak to you soon. And with that, we will be wrapping up the episode. So, yeah, huge, huge chunk um, in this one. I realised I didn't craft a light orb earlier, so we'll do that now. There we go. Empty light orb created. We've got the cooked shark as well. So those are basically the biggest, the biggest challenges that we're going to face for probably a little while. Um, I'd like to say a huge thank you to the channel members who, as always, are Avery Fields, IT Warrior, Eddie Mayer, Shocked Thief, Mitchell Nunley, DJ Focus, Grimsley, Elpinin, Grimzoso, Salnex or Kai, Hunterman, Fontcest, and our newest channel member, Carl Sprouse. Yeah, thank you guys. Uh, the financial support is always welcome when trying to justify to my wife why spending 250 hours crafting molten glass and cooking uh, 50, 60,000 meat is a good idea. Um, so thank you. And hopefully, hopefully the next video won't take as long and it will hopefully be longer. There's kind of an inverse relationship in, in old school RuneScape content creating where 
the longer something takes in game the less footage you get out of it so this video is probably slightly shorter than the others but i'll be back with a vengeance with the uh, hour long videos hopefully in the next one um but thank you for watching and i'll see you next time bye